All right, guys, what is going on? Welcome back to the Sophisticated Man YouTube channel. Obviously, I am Tino Regano. Today, I'm joined by a very special guest, Mr. Chris. How you doing, brother? Good, Tino. I appreciate you having me on the call. I'm very excited to kind of connect with your audience and talk about some some very interesting topics, things that everybody needs to hear. Very 100%, excited. 100%, man. Glad to have you here. And I think this is something that a lot of men can benefit from, especially when it comes to just personal development stuff. I know that you yourself are on the grind and you know we are both doing our thing. So very quickly and briefly that for the people that don't know you, just kind of explain like who you are, what you do, and you know why you do what you do. Yeah. So again, really appreciate the chance to share with everybody kind of my my story and sort of, you know, the way that I happen to go about my own grind to get progress. Um, really, my name is Christopher. Uh, I am 24, turned 24 yesterday or Friday. What day is today? I don't even know the day anymore. I don't care anymore. Forget. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I'm 24. Uh, I am a nursing school dropout who has started and failed two different businesses and now runs a third successful business. Mm -hmm. I do trading with Forex, typically trade, day trading the uh, equity market. So like the Dow 30. And um, yeah, I'm very, very committed to uh, making sure I live a healthy lifestyle. Um I'm committed to personal growth and just really trying to achieve the the best that I can be. You know, I feel like there's never ending progress to be made. And at this moment right now, really, really into day trading. It is a, uh, I've been obsessed with it since 2020, we got locked down and I started to really um, see it as a great opportunity. Um, there was two ways to be able to look at the, that pandemic. It was like, either we're going to come out afterward and you're going to have gotten worse or you're going to have gotten better. And um, right. even though shit wasn't able to move and you weren't really able to do maybe as much as you were able to do, it was a blessing, man. So, um, yeah, got got fascinated with it then and through lots of a uh, lots and lots of ups and downs, lots and lots of a lot of downs, mm -hmm. um, way more downs than ups. But. Mm -hmm. it's been a, it's been an incredible journey, man. And I, it is just getting started. That's, that's the thing mm -hmm. that's so exciting about it. Um, mm -hmm. it feels like that monster, that, that mountain I get to con I get to conquer. So kind of enjoy that aspect of things. So absolutely. Yeah, dude, that's kind of, that's kind of me. Um, when I, so I want to touch on kind of like when I say dropout, I'm more so left because I was in my third year, I was rocking like a 3.85 GPA nursing school. Mm -hmm. But I remember specifically one moment there was a, um, I was in Montreal with my friends and I had been doing multi, uh, network marketing for this company and I was doing really well. At 19, I had a team doing about $12,000 a month. I was earning trips. I was doing this. I was doing that. It was going great. And nursing school gets really hard. I mean, it's, a, it's no joke. It is no joke. Uh, the curriculum is very difficult. It takes a lot of time, a lot of energy. And I was at this fork in the road. I felt like in my, in my, in my life, I was like, okay, I'm either going to have to get rid of one of these two things. Cause they both require a lot of time. I'm either going to have to not be this entrepreneur person. I'm going to finish school and then, you know, maybe come back to it. Or I'm going to say I'm dropping this and I'm going full bore on myself. I'm going full bore on my entrepreneurship. And to me at 19, it really wasn't even a question. It was um, my spirit. God just said, go. And I did. I dropped my paperwork off at school on Friday. That was on Saturday night. Friday the following week, had my paperwork in. I was done. Mm. And um, yeah, it's been a lot of up and down since then. But man, I'm very, uh, although there have been some times where I've really doubted my decision, uh, when I really take a hard look at it and take inventory, I mean, I'm very, very happy with my decision. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 100% dude. I love that. I love the story, man. And that's one of the reasons I obviously had you on here because you've taken a lot of action in your life. You're obviously a go-getter, you know, you're a hustler, you're you're hungry for success and that's the kind of, you know, that's the kind of mentality, that's the kind of attitude I want to instill in these men that, you know, watch my videos, the guys that consume my content. I want them to have that hunger for life and that that ability to take action, which is essentially the main I think topic that we're kind of like um you know, talking around here is, is taking action. Clearly you've done a, a ton of different things. You had to go left. You had to go right. You said you mm -hmm. had some ups, you had some downs. So very quickly, like how, how important do you feel that it is for men to just, even if they don't know exactly what to do, just to take action, just to get started. 
That's a, that's a really good question. And it's, it's so cheesy and I hate to say it, but action is really everything because if there's one thing I've learned through my life is it's very different in theory and it's very different in the field. It's a fact. And the only way that you can translate this into actual wisdom Mm -hmm. and actual knowledge and actual um, skill sets that people can take away from you is to go into the field and put in the work. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, some people consider reading a book, taking action, and it is in a way, but Mm -hmm. really, um, really where the action is, that's the low level of action. And there's different levels of action. You need to initially learn to take any action. Some people need to learn to make their bed in the morning. Right. Let me just back up really quick. Action is really important for setting the tone on where you're going to find yourself later on in life. Mm. If you cannot take action, you are not going to be the person dictating. You are going to be dictated to. Mm. And for better or worse, you're going to be told what to do. And the only way you're going to be able to be told what to do by someone who does take action Mm. in a way that you like to work with someone that you may maybe enjoy that career or whatever, you still have to take action. You still have to be hungry and you still have to move forward because there's, there's two options. You're going to be the dictator or you're going to be dictated to. Mm. And I don't mean tyrannical. I just mean power, being able to act, being able to on your own volition, go left or right, instead of being corralled, right. You have to be able to learn to take action and there's different levels of action. Mm. but the habit is a muscle that you need to make important in your life. And I mean it when I say win or lose, I'm going to die trying. Mm. Russ has a great line. Even if I crash, I would rather be the driver than the passenger. Mm. And that's, that sums it up. That's a fact. Because crashing is inevitable. That's another thing. Crashing is inevitable, but action is not inevitable. Mm. I posted on my story yesterday. I said, you know, changing is hard, but staying the same is harder. And essentially at the core, that is action. So mm-hmm. action is really, really important. It's a, it's literally everything. And you need to start where you feel that you can get a win. And you feel like mm-hmm. you can start making action a habit because, you know, dropping out of school is not something for everybody. I really don't recommend it for most people. I don't think that it's a good idea for most people to be too extreme with things. You need to start smaller and you need mm-hmm. to just Take action in what you believe is your way. This just happens to be what my spirit is telling me. Mm -hmm. And this is what I know my hunger takes me. And so I'm going to do this and you need to follow that for you. Mm -hmm. I I, I 100% agree, dude. Like just taking small baby steps, even if it's like going to the gym a couple of days a week, just to get started, just to do something. Like a lot of guys, I think, you know, they they get caught up in trying to, you know, find their purpose and know what they're supposed to do in life. And like, Oh, well, I don't, I don't know what I'm meant to do. And honestly, even getting started with small minor things like that, like even going for a walk outside or reading a book, like you said, or applying that, the knowledge you learned in that book, these small steps are going to take you towards that path. Ultimately, like it just takes something to get that momentum rolling. And I love, I love the distinction that you just made. I, I kind of want to bring it back to that a little bit between being the dictator and being dictated. I I love that analogy. So Mm -hmm. in your opinion, sticking with that analogy, like how, how uh, critical is it? Well, actually maybe I'll phrase it this way. What are some of the like setbacks and maybe some of the, the, the negative things that come with being dictated to by not taking action? Really? You know, it's kind of like finding your purpose or really figuring out what path to take. There's a million different paths and you mm-hmm. need to figure out what it is for you. And so depending on what you like or dislike is going to kind of determine what is a negative for you. But I will tell you this, that the negative in general, the, the general principle is you are not going to have what's called power and power is literally defined as the ability to act. Mm-hmm. So if, if for what, you know, whether or not you're, desire to act is you know just stupid analogy like going to the opera but somebody says you can't go to the opera and then you can't go Mm. you know that stinks nobody likes that and so um that can be a a potential downside when you want to go on a vacation with your friends that they're like hey 
we're going to go to Boston or we're going to go to Austin, Texas, and we're going to take a weekend and we're going to go do this, but you can't afford to go or you can't take the time off from work because work said, no, they denied your time off. Mm -hmm. You know, that irritates you. I mean, it, it irritates me. And mm -hmm. I know that most people don't like not being able to act. So in its many forms, being unable to do what you feel you want to do or you desire mm -hmm. to do is really the downside to being dictated to because, mm -hmm. you know, even with a lenient person, there's going to be a backstop and there's going to be a wall where you can't go past it. If you're not the type of person who takes action to set themselves up like chess to be able to go and do what they'd like. So mm -hmm. again, that can, that negative portion can take many forms. Hmm. I know what you mean. Cause I've, I've had some experience with that is like, you know, you want to do something, but maybe your friends, they're not all on board. Like, for example, I've been really, really focused on my fitness kick and my, and my nutrition mm -hmm. very recently. And, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you have people around you that want to go, Hey, let's go eat, get some pizza or let's, let's eat these like really nasty fried food all day, like during the weekends. And I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I can't like, I'm, I'm focused on, you know, building mm -hmm. my body up eating healthy foods and I got to stay disciplined. So what I even hear in that, in, in, in doing what you want to do is like setting up that action, staying away from the, um, almost the negative, the negative things that take you away from that. It, it sounds to me like freedom, like action gives you that freedom. Yeah. I mean, there's no, uh, there's no other way to get where you want to go because there's mm -hmm. again in the world, Jordan Peterson's a great person to kind of distinguish this, you know, there's order and chaos. Chaos mm -hmm. is amazing in its positive form and it's destructive in its negative form and it's positive form in its creation. There's infinite paths forward. Mm -hmm. If you don't take action, you are no better off than just a leaf that drifts wherever the wind blows. It could blow left. It could blow right. It could blow left. It could go up, down, sideways, backwards, a hundred in a, in a yep. hundred years, you've not moved more than 10 feet because you just keep drifting. Mm -hmm. So action it's impossible in a chaotic world, which is where we live, to with infinite choices, infinite ability to move this way or that way. If you don't self-determine where you want to go and you don't set proper targets and then take mm -hmm. steps towards that, you're just not going to get there. Right. If I'm shooting my gun and I have nothing, if I don't, I'm not going to hit anything unless I aim at something. Right. I can shoot all over the place and nobody's going to like, I'm not going to hit the target because I'm not mm -hmm. aiming. Mm -hmm. So... So yeah, it's it's only it's only logic when you think about it that unless you go and make shit happen, you are going to be a leaf and that's it. Mm -hmm. You're powerless, you're drifting, and you're not going to get where you want to go. And you're going to feel like crap when you look up in 10 years and be like, "Damn, I didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. I don't like this. I haven't done shit." Yeah. I'm 35, I'm 40, I'm 50, I haven't done a thing. Mm. Nobody likes that feeling. No way, man. I I mean, I've been there for a temporary point in my life where like just a little backstory when I was in college and I've said this on my channel before, or, you know, I was in a major that was ultimately picked by my parents and just like other mm -hmm. people. It wasn't something that I felt like very called to do or very passionate about. And because I was living this life that really wasn't something I chose for myself, at least not consciously chose, it was, uh, you know, it, it wasn't fulfilling. I, I didn't feel mm -hmm. like I was actually moving towards like my best self. Right. So that's something and I that, really try to that preach. hollow feeling that hollow feeling right there mm -hmm. is the thing that should be pushing everybody to go take action because imagine right. living with that chronic ache I've been in the same place mm -hmm. I have been the person where I have my moments after defeats especially where I have to like have something wake me up and I'm like oh shit yeah I am I am I am doing nothing I'm going nowhere fast mm -hmm. and so the you oh can feel moment. very busy. Yeah. Well, you <laughs> need to always be course correcting and that comes with self-awareness, but yeah. Yeah. So I I'm with you, man. I, I have experienced a lot of the same, all the same emotions that everybody yeah. who's ever tried to do anything has ever experienced. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause it, it can really like uh, the, the, the analogy that you use with the leaf floating in the wind, I've used that a ton on this channel and I've said it mm. because that's how it literally feels like you're just like at the mercy of life as opposed to, having mm. some kind of like pull, some kind of uh, like you're reacting to life. Life isn't reacting to you. Right. Mm -hmm. Like I, I love the, I even picture sometimes like a, you're on a sailboat, right? And like your, your hands mm -hmm. on the wheel, your steering wheel, life is going to blow you in all different directions. The wind's going to guide you this way. Wind's going to guide you this way. 
But as long as you have that internal compass and you know where you're ultimately, maybe not exactly heading, but you have a direction, you have some kind of like, all right, I'm heading west, I'm heading this way. Even if the mm -hmm. winds are blowing you all around, at the end of the day, your hands are on the steering wheel. You can easily course correct. Yeah. And that goes into something that's really important even before taking action is you have to know where you want to go. Clarity. And yeah, you and even if it's vague, if it, even if it's vague clarity, you know, mm -hmm. um, your vision becomes clearer the further you go. And so mm -hmm. you are going to be real fuzzy at first. And then eventually, as you kind of move along and you get that action habit, mm. you eventually get clarity in your vision as you tunnel vision forward. And then your life gets simple and you get laser focused. And that's where it gets really fun. Mm. Because, you know, a lot of us are kind of like when we're lost in the woods. I don't know if you've ever been in the deep woods, but oh, I did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know how it is. It's different. Mm -hmm. A lot of people who have never experienced, it is a scary place. Like for real, mm -hmm. it's not forgiving nature. Nature's scary. Um, mm -hmm. And, and if you've ever been deep in the woods and you get lost, there's yep. one piece of information that's more important than anything else. The and sun. that is to know, well, the sun. Yeah. Cause that helps you get this piece of information. Mm -hmm. It helps you understand where you are exactly at this moment, mm -hmm. because even if you pick the right bearing, but you know, you start from the wrong place, you're going to mm. get off track by a lot. And so mm. before you can even take action, you have to figure out where you are and you have to take honest inventory of what you, what you are. Mm. And you have to be, you have, you don't have to be mean about it. Reality is not going to be, it's reality is not nice or mean. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. And so when you take inventory, you need to stop getting in your feelings and acting like you're hurting your own feelings or even talk down on yourself. Mm -hmm. um, you just need to accept it for what it is and understand that by accepting where you are and figuring that out perfectly, you can accurately move forward, which is step two. You have to know where you like to go in general. Mm -hmm. So before you can even take action steps in whatever form that takes, you have to start at point Z and work backward. Mm-hmm. Totally agree, man. And I think really it all comes back to what we were saying about self-awareness, like knowing yourself, knowing what it is even that you want, like what is important to you, what, what motivates you, what gets you out of bed in the morning. And I think that issue, at least today in men that I've seen, you know, just with just on YouTube and just different men that I've seen in life, it's, I think that is a big problem is a lot of guys don't know who they are. And there's, I mean, you know, so many distractions, social media, there's stuff like there's, there's women always are a distraction for men. Money is always a distraction. Material things are always a distraction. Then you got the media, all this different stuff. And mm -hmm. it can be hard to sometimes close that off and just focus in on yourself to understand who you are, what you want, what do you believe in? Because there are so many things out there. So I guess we can speak on that. Cause I'm curious, like in your own experience, how did maybe you personally shut some of that stuff out to, to get focused on who Chris was? Um, well, I mean, I guess that, that takes us back a little bit further where like, you know, personally, I've, I've kind of always been a, a pretty, um, pretty ambitious person mm -hmm. for as long as I can really remember. But what really started to <laughs> solidify this hunger, because ultimately, listen, if you you have all the desire to go where you want to go, but you don't have that, that, that like grind, like, I'm going to go kill this thing in front of me. If mm -hmm. you don't have that, I can't teach you that. You got to find that for yourself. You got to find out your reason to do it. My reason mm -hmm. started when we were going to get food boxes from the town because we were so poor. And my family, my mom was raising two, me and my two younger brothers on a really fixed income. And talk about powerless, man. It's not a fun feeling sure. to go up to the town clerk and be like, hey, I'm here to pick up food for the Hannon family. And you get a dolly, a squeaky ass dolly, <laughs> and you go load up food boxes with a little coupon for the, for the store and you have to wheel it out to your trunk and everybody's looking at you. And it's a weird, mm. it's just a weird feeling. And, um, I didn't like that at all. You know, there were several times when I would come home from working at a restaurant all night after going to school all day and I would come home and the oil was out. And so I would take a cold <laughs> shower in November in Maine. <laughs> a cold shower in November and Maine after working for fucking 18 hours. Damn, and, that's cold. and, and what really got me sort of onto the path 
that I am now is I was at a really, I was in a negative place at when I was like 16, 17, 17, I would say I was really in a negative place. I had a lot of anger from where I was and I had a deep desire to just not be here. Mm. And I was either going to do, I was going to do some illegal shit to try and get some money because again, it's that drive and that hunger to get out of this painful place Mm. was very great. And then I met um, the CEO of that network marketing company that I met. My mom made me go talk to him and he recommended books and talked with me. And man, that was a serious turning point in my life. And so when it comes to um, your original question, how do you get moving? You kind of get to find your reason because once I had my, all this energy, I had this tension that came from, I was disliked where I was. A lot of people want to feel too fucking comfortable. Mm-hmm. it's really it's really just you being soft as fuck to be honest i'm not gonna mm-hmm. i'm not gonna lie uh you need to face your demons yep. and you need to have the confidence to look it in its eye and say you might be big right now but i will beat you and you have to know it in your heart with faith and you take that energy and you move it into the direction you have to channel that energy and so when i got into the action habit was when i got introduced to the culture of that network marketing company. And I met mentors, which is really important to get. You must find a mentor. If you can't do it yourself, it's Mm -hmm. always a good idea that you find someone who is where you want to be and link up with them and spend your money and spend your time and invest in you because you will never make a bad investment in yourself. Mm -hmm. So when I started to sort of take that energy and move forward, um, it really just solidified this core belief in my, in my head that was, you can get where you'd like to go and I am going to get there. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't a question of if, it was a question of when. And it was just in your heart, you just have to settle on it that it's decided and there's nothing anybody can do to stop me. Mm. I might fail, I might, I might fall down, I might trip, I might stumble, I might lose all of my money and start from zero, which I have done probably five times, which is a horrible feeling, but you know, whatever I'm here. And, um, you just have to move forward, man. And, uh, but it really starts with finding your reason. What is the reason? My reason was I hate being poor. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't like going to beg people for food. I don't. So Mm -hmm. that was really where that, that ambition really morphed those hard years, six, seven years of, we moved 25 times in like a three year period. I went to like five different high schools. Like I did a bunch of shit never had money family i was fighting all this shit Mm. yeah that uh that forged something in me and i'm Mm. i'm grateful for it i'm grateful for it because um the intensity and the ambition yeah it comes from there Mm -hmm. dude i well first of all props to you for making it out of that situation because i know that can be really hard for Mm -hmm. i mean the majority of people like a lot of people sometimes stay there and they feel stuck so i mean hats off to you for doing that and, and finding that motivation to move forward even in those kind of conditions, which Mm -hmm. is kind of what I wanted to talk about because I I feel like, yeah, man, a hundred percent. And I feel like a lot of men, not even men, just really everybody, I think in general, like you look across the board when it comes to successful people, when it comes to people that are really like making moves in life, I, from what I've seen, and I haven't obviously seen everybody, but a very large portion of those people all had some kind of painful event or like seriously adverse situation that just like woke them the fuck up. And it's like, I either I'm going to sink or I'm going to swim. And Mm -hmm. I think that that is something that is sorely missing today, especially in, in, in men's improvement guys just think, okay, I'm going to work on myself for a week or a month or a year. Then my life's going to change. It's like, bro, it takes a lot longer than that. And most of the time you're going to be uncomfortable with shit you're going to be really uncomfortable. There's going to be a lot of stuff that does not go Mm -hmm. your way, a lot of pain. And I, I think people try to sidestep that and think that they can bypass the pain, bypass the uncomfort. But I truly believe that that stuff right there makes the success happen. So like, what, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah. And, and let me just say this too. Um, if I could have stopped that shit with a button in the (laughs) moment, if I could have hit a big red button and then been out of there mm-hmm. and had a normal life and like a normal childhood, dude, there's no chance that I'm staying there. Right. I did not want to be there. It just was happenstance. And for whatever reason, I feel like it was just God putting me in the position to eventually become more clear for the future. I mean, that's 
seven that's almost 10 years ago when i'm 24 my parents divorced when i was 14 so yeah that shit that shit show started mm. when i was like 14 sucked but yeah you're right you know again if i could have stopped it i would have no human being in their right mind wants to go dive into being in a fucking low income housing and not eating food and being uncomfortable and like nobody wants to do that stuff on in a, in their right mind like you shouldn't mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. the fact that some men want to avoid that or some people i understand it is a very normal thought it's human nature mm -hmm. but and here's the big but big juicy but we all like that <laughs> the peach but, uh, <laughs> like the peach, man if you don't have motivation just think about big juicy peach and it gets you it gets you going but um <laughs> yeah so you have to go do hard shit and so yeah i was thinking about this this morning it's funny that you asked this because i literally just have these random thoughts i was thinking today you ever have you ever watched like animal planet you ever used to watch animal planet mm -hmm. i used to watch animal planet all yeah, the time yeah. and i remember there was this one specific event that i always used to be like i used to get like my my blood pressure be gone and shit and it's probably something that's gonna surprise you when sea turtles get born those little <laughs> baby sea turtles dude watching them and how dramatic it is because I don't know if you know this or people watching know this, but basically the mothers go up, they have their eggs, they bury them under the sand, like 80 feet from the beachhead. So it's like the water lines here and they're born all the way over here. So it's like what they have to do is they have to uncover themselves when they hatch. But there's predators literally everywhere. There's seagulls, there's mm -hmm. birds of prey, there's little lizard things, there's foxes, there's every type of predator is waiting because they know that they're about to hatch. Mm. And so they have to uncover themselves, hatch, dig through the sand, and then scurry as fast as they can, avoiding all the predators, and hopefully make it to the beach, make it to the water, and avoid the sharks waiting for them there too. Everybody knows they want to get a piece. And there's hundreds that are born, and there's only a handful that ever make it. But here's mm -hmm. the thing that really links to what I'm talking about and what we're talking about. If you were to take that sea turtle and carry them from their hatched egg, and carry them safely to the water and let them get into the ocean, those ones have a 100% chance of dying. Right. And there's a reason for that. Their muscles are not developed in that struggle mm -hmm. gets them strong enough to be able to survive in the ocean. Because although they may have a percentage of dying, pretty high percentage at that, 95% are going to die before they reach the water, but they have a 100% chance of dying if they get help and they avoid the struggle. So mm. you've got 5% chance of success, or you've got a 0% chance of success. The 0% chance of success is if you avoid the struggle. Mm. So if you never do hard shit, why should you be strong? Why should you deserve anything? Mm -hmm. You don't. You don't. If you do not go out and hunt and kill, you don't eat. Mm. End of story. That's a fact. And this dude. is something that people forget in whatever. We're in a soft ass society. Yep. Listen, I'm not going to act like the godfather of this information. <laughs> I didn't really come up with a lot of this stuff. However, mm -hmm. I can tell you that there are sharks out there. There are people that are very competitive. I'm very competitive. I'm looking to help people. But, like, listen, when it comes to if it's me versus you, I'm sorry, I'm going to wipe the floor with you. That's just how it is. Mm -hmm. And you need to be ready to face people like that. Look at this. There's a video of Bradley Beal talking to a group of college kids at an AAU camp. And they're like, there's 128 spots on the NBA roster. And you think you're going to take it from me? Think again. <laughs> you're not taking my spot. And if you think you are, you're wrong. And mm -hmm. so you listen, when it comes to doing hard things, hard things, as uncomfortable as they are, and as much as we want to avoid them, it's ultimately what gets us prepared for the next step of life because right. there's phases of life. There's phases of your growth. You don't go into the gym curling 50s. You go into the gym struggling right. with 10s. Mm -hmm. Everybody does. Mm -hmm. But if you skip the 10s and you try to go to 50s, you're going to rip your bicep and hurt yourself. Like it's just <laughs> not going to happen. So yep. don't avoid the hard stuff, man. It's, it's, a, it's a real travesty because mm -hmm. you also rob yourself of the confidence you build when you do hard things. I can right. look someone in the face, look them dead in the eyes and know for a, a fact that I'm going to win mm -hmm. because, you know, by choice or not by choice, I've done a lot of hard things and uh, nothing really phases me at this point. So, mm. 
yeah, you, you just develop this killer instinct and you just have to run with it. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, a lot of people just never give themselves the gift of getting that killer instinct. Mm. It's fun. It's great, man. It's a, it's a real confidence boost when you know you can handle something. Trust me. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I mean, I, I think that that alone like builds real confidence. Like guys talk about how do I get confident? How do I get confident? Like mm -hmm. be, un be uncomfortable, like do shit. That's hard. Like that's going to build kill that confidence. Listen, the, the story of David and Goliath is my favorite story in the Bible. It's just like, dude, man, can you imagine how badass David felt when he just <laughs> stood up, like went up, hit him with a sling, right? ran over, used his own sword, cut his fucking head off and held it up. Mm. Man, like think, imagine that feeling, close your eyes and really try and focus and, and imagine that put on some like Avenge Sevenfold and just imagine yourself <laughs> going to kill a literal giant. I'm jaw joking. That feeling you feel that, that that i can't even describe it. it's just like a primal instinct mm -hmm. that is a nice feeling and a lot of people mm -hmm. in our society want to like shit on masculinity and shit on that feeling mm -hmm. listen let them do what they're gonna do there's i'm not gonna buy into it they're they are wrong yeah and being masculine and being a man and going to do shit that is the right way mm -hmm. being soft and is no use to the group it's not <laughs> what use are you <laughs> trying to be a woman like you're not yeah. a woman go do some shit Mm -hmm. not that women can't do shit that's not what i'm saying what i'm yeah. saying is don't emasculate yourself go do stuff I mean, by by not facing discomfort you're being you're emasculating yourself you're cutting your nuts off mm -hmm. like come on man Snap i love it. i love that we're talking about this because i was literally going to bring it back to this point exactly so i'm i'm glad that this is kind of like a perfect segue to to this whole thing because when it comes to masculinity when you look at ancient tribes like even even today like if you, look, you go down in like the amazon you go down to like the rainforest where there's mm -hmm. like still tribal uh tribes of men and women but to become a man in a tribe or some kind of uh, group like that you don't just wake up and you're born and okay now you're a man you're a boy mm -hmm. until you have to go through certain trials so like they put mm -hmm. like i read something like uh tribes in africa like put on these these ant, like fire ant gloves on these yeah, young boys they sit there and they bite your hands for like like days at a time and if you can yeah. survive that on the other side you're officially a man and it's yeah. like that's that's the big problem in today's society it's like obviously i'm not telling guys to fucking stick your hand inside of an ant hole well, listen, if we're doing it we're, let's send it fuck it let's go yeah. <laughs> just i don't uh, want to do it i'm way too get soft. some i'm way too soft, <laughs> way too soft. let me just be honest <laughs> those guys hey they got some balls to do that but i think the For point real? i'm the point i'm making is like to be a man there needs to be some kind of initiation for you to really step into that manhood. And I think because mm -hmm. we're so comfortable today in society, it's like what you're saying, like men have become soft. We've become very mm -hmm. docile. That doesn't happen. So the reason guys are like the way that they are now, they're very passive. They're not very assertive. They're not very confident. They're not leading in the way that they used to because there's no initiation like there was um, when tribes were very like all over the place. You know what I mean? Like there was there's not some kind of path to say, hey, go through some shit. And on the other side, then you become a man. It's lacking these mm -hmm. days. Yeah. And I would say that's pretty recent. Even forget about tribes. That's just a good example because uh, at the end of the day, um, it's if you're not familiar with this, for the people watching, I'm sure you are. Maslow's hierarchy of needs really sticks out to me when you kind of interpret the way that mm -hmm. society has moved. We're in a time. So Maslow's hierarchy of needs, let me cover it. You can Google it, look up the chart, whatever. It's very important. Mm -hmm. At the bottom of this hierarchy, it's basically you have steps to move up before you can uh, basically self-actualize or become who you're supposed to be or live your highest purpose. Mm -hmm. At the bottom is like food, water, shelter, sex. Yep. And then it's like a uh, sense of belonging to a group. And then it's a couple, it's like two more different scenarios. But then at the top is called self-actualization. Mm -hmm. you can you cannot get to the self-actualization spot without um first taking care of the basic at the bottom mm -hmm. but here's the twist that sounds great and dandy but here's the negative side we've gotten to a point where as you've said there is no trials aka we have not had to go get food and water for a while right. we don't have to do this we are pretty well connected we're pretty safe we're pretty healthy we live in america or elsewhere where in the modern world like most places we're doing better than any time in human history by an exponential 
<laughs> by a by a huge we've eradicated more poverty in the last 20 years than ever in history literally the last 20 years we've eradicated like an exponential amount of poverty it's crazy mm-hmm. so the negative side to this is just like the woke culture don't be a man be soft as fuck do mm-hmm. all this stuff because our needs are met and so we're kind of at this weird imaginary figuring out the idealism in the world mm-hmm. and ideal this is goes back to my first thing i said Mm-hmm. There's a difference between knowledge and where rubber meets the road. There's a difference between reading something in a book and then going to apply it in the real world. Idealism is over here. Mm-hmm. Reality is over here. Mm-hmm. And the truth lies where idealism and reality have yep. to meet and contend. Without having to go through these trials, we imagine all these different ways that make you a man with forgetting the basics. We've forgotten the basics. And so the... Mm-hmm. Um, especially in America or Europe or like any of these well-off first or second world countries, man, we really don't have to worry about a whole lot. So right. um, it's, it's really easy to understand why people are not doing hard things, but mm-hmm. this is where you need to have the, the ability to either work with a coach and go and do the hard shit they tell you to do. Mm-hmm. So right. you know, hopefully that wasn't too long winded, but that's just how I feel. No, I mean, you're, I think you're dead on, man. And, and it kind of comes back to the point we were making earlier too. It's like, start small, you know, do something that's just uncomfortable. Even if it's taking cold showers every day, you know, like, just do that. Just get started somewhere of taking uncomfortable action because the more that that becomes easy and the more that that becomes just, okay, I take cold showers right now. What do I want to do? Okay. Maybe I'll go outside and just go take myself to the movies. A lot of people don't do that. They don't, they don't just take themselves out and just enjoy mm-hmm. their own company. Like find things that are more and more uncomfortable for you. Always be moving in that direction because let's face it, without uncomfort and without uh, uncomfort, without like uncomfortable situations and without adversity and shit, there is no growth. You just stay the mm-hmm. same. Yeah. And let me just, let me also just say this. It's like, I understand that a lot of times, um, in my life, when I talk about these failures and these different, uh, these different failures is really the way to put it. These, these negative times in my life, really down times, like really, really dark times. And that's probably a different type of video. Mm -hmm. Um, I find that being your own self saboteur is likely what happens. I self sabotage in a lot of different ways Mm -hmm. by ignoring what we're talking about. And I've done it a million times in trading. I can tell you that's been like my biggest, you know, well, that's been a really big thing that I've been trying to hurdle. It's really, it's really difficult, not on the technical side to read a chart and understand where to buy and sell. It really doesn't take that long to get good at because it's very simple. The hard part is the 90% of it is yourself. When you go to press a button and you put your money on the line and you do this, you do some weird shit, man. And what ends up happening is when you do things that are just sort of like willy nilly, whatever, 2000 bucks, buy 3000 mm-hmm. bucks, buy. Yep. And then all of a sudden you look around, I worked all summer to save up all this money. Now it's all fucking gone. And I'm like, what just happened, dude? Like, I don't <laughs> even know. That wasn't me. That was Patricia. Like that was like somebody, <laughs> like that was somebody different. But, um, the reason I bring that up is because likely if you really, really, really are honest with yourself like i was had to be honest with myself Mm. i was avoiding the things that were going to get me the success because they made me so uncomfortable right what i mean by that is when you're trading for an analogy you need to set up a parameter of rules that give you a high likelihood of winning Mm -hmm. where that becomes uncomfortable is when your emotions are like no you're gonna miss it you're gonna miss it you're gonna do this you're gonna do this all Mm -hmm. of a sudden you've got all this stuff in your chest it's Mm -hmm. running up against these rules and these and these principles right Mm -hmm. and one of two things is going to win either you go past your rules and your your discomfort goes away Mm -hmm. but you have a huge loss on the other side of that yeah or or you deal with the discomfort you submit to this principle and you swallow the discomfort you learn to live with it and eventually you fucking win, dude. And mm-hmm. you win big. And that feeling, it's like you can either get rid of the little discomfort, have a huge discomfort later, or you mm-hmm. can have a little bit of discomfort and have a huge wave of success and euphoria afterwards like mm-hmm. you wouldn't believe. And that comes down to 
I've got a friend right now that I went to Dallas and um, he was kind of down bad. I'll just be honest. Hopefully he watched this and doesn't feel too bad, but he was down bad. His mentality was really in the, in the gutter. Um, wasn't where he wanted to be like, really dude. I was like, bro, I had never met him in person. I just knew him from like online. And, and, and I, and I was just like, dude, this man mm. needs some serious help because mm. he's tw- 27. He's not, dude, he's going to be fu- He's going to be down fucking bad for the rest of his life. He doesn't mm. make a change right now. Not going to lie. I was kind of hard on him a little bit that weekend. I was mm. pretty hard on him. I said a lot of things that probably pissed him off and that's fine. I'm willing to do that. This man texts me as I'm getting on the plane on a uh, Monday and it's like, man, I thought a lot about what you said. I really do need to make a change. He did. He committed to 31 days in a row of exercise and he lost like 3% body fat. He's hmm. feeling muscular. And now he's got the habit continuing, but like mm-hmm. we would text here and there and he'd be like, dude, I really don't want to go to the gym. I'm having a bad day. I'm having a bad day. I'm having a bad day. I'd mm-hmm. be like, stop being a fucking pussy and get to the gym. And <laughs> when he got over his discomfort and he went to the gym and he came out and he stuck to what he said he was going to do, yeah. man, 31 days, he's 60 days after that. Mm-hmm. man he's getting kind of jacked dude mm-hmm. like he's getting kind of jacked and i'm like dude don't you feel good and he's like dude yeah. i've never felt this good in my life mm-hmm. it's life-changing it really is life-changing life-changing you got to submit to that discomfort in the direction of your goals period mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so real quick I, I love that story with your friend because i kind of i didn't do something similar but i'll use my own kind of story when i when i'm talking about this is yeah I kind of had a similar setup to where I have identified a lot of different things in my life that I, I feel that are very comfortable. So Mm -hmm. I've been, you know, I've, I was like really into video games for a large, large portion of my life. And there really wasn't a point where I just kind of like completely cut them off. Like I always kind of came back to them, obviously not as much as I did when I was a kid, but uh, always would come back to them, like maybe on the weekends or like after work, when I get done with some stuff, I'd hop on the video game, hop on PlayStation or whatever. I never really gave myself a break from mm-hmm. that. And I've noticed within the last, especially within this last year, about the last six mm-hmm. months, I'm noticing there's really three main things that have been fucking me up for like the last mm-hmm. four years. And that is binge eating snacks, excessive video games and excessive like masturbation staying up late mm-hmm. all, all that bullshit right so i committed to myself this month and i was like well i committed myself the whole year but this month i made a big challenge i was like you know what i'm gonna fast for 72 hours every single weekend for the rest of this month i'm not gonna play video games i'm not gonna binge eat food i'm not gonna you know i'm not gonna do any of this shit i just kind of like damn so completely did like a dopamine detox almost it was like a straight detox and I just finished out my fast actually today. Just, you know, got some food in me, but. You didn't that, eat for 72 hours for the weekend. Yeah. Like I wouldn't eat for like two, three days. <laughs> dog, dog. That's crazy. I like it though. Dude, it's, uh, there's a lot of health benefits to fasting, man. I, I'm yeah, not gonna, there are, dude. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to get into everything on this podcast, but there's, yeah. there's a lot of benefits to, to fasting. And I've learned that firsthand. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, just. The act of just doing that and, and like on the other side of that, like I, I can't tell you how clear I've become with my goals, mm-hmm. what I want to do now that I'm not playing video games, now that I'm not like distracted by food or by whatever, I'm just like, oh shit, like I could do some more work on my business. I could do more work on myself. And it's just, you get that motivation to do that because you're not wasting it in these activities that are draining you. So mm-hmm. I, I totally, I totally believe in that, man. Yeah, you're spot on, man. And like, here's the last, here's like another part of it too, is like, we're talking a lot about discomfort, uh, giving things up, doing this Mm -hmm. or that. Now, let me tell you myself personally, I'm pretty, I I tend to be, you can ask anybody, I tend to be pretty intense and I get pretty into things. So if I do something, I'm maybe sometimes take things a little bit too far. And so let me just say this Mm -hmm. to everybody watching. On the one hand, you got to remember the reason you're giving this stuff up and the reason you're sacrificing because at the other end of this is a, a really, really nice reward. I'm not going to act like I don't have a comfortable life. I just work my fucking balls off to mm-hmm. be able to have those comfortable things. If I want to go get a fat steak, I go get a fat steak. And mm-hmm. I reward myself because I have been to the gym 15 days in a row. Or I've done right. this and that. Or I have, you know, I write down on my whiteboard every week, my weekly goals. If I stick to those. And I, and I am doing what I'm supposed to do. 
there's absolutely no reason why I shouldn't be able to reward myself. But here's the part. Mm. A lot of people just constantly reward themselves and yep. they never feel like they earned it. Mm-hmm. You rob yourself from that satisfaction of earning it. Right. And so that is really what we're talking about because nobody wants to just give up video games forever or not yeah. eat this or not do this forever for no reason. Mm-hmm. The reason you're doing it is so that you are in control of yourself and your choices yep. and you can live the life that you would like to live. Mm-hmm. If you cannot afford to go buy a $50 steak right now and have some wine with it and take a girl out with you and do this and that and go, you know, have fun. Mm-hmm. Listen, it's probably because you haven't, you haven't done the work to like get there or do that stuff because right. you can, but you have to say no to a lot more at first to say yes to things later. It's mm-hmm. called investing. Mm-hmm. You know, when you put $10 in, if you wait five years, you get $30 back. That's just how it works. You give up your $10 today. You say, no junk food, doing a fast. I'm not going to mm-hmm. masturbate. I'm not going to watch porn. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to waste my time. Mm-hmm. And then in like five months or three months, when summer comes around, you take a shirt off at the pool, you're ripped. Every girl wants to get with you. Right. It's fucking nice. It's freaking mm-hmm. sick. It's mm-hmm. sick. It's so sick. It's nice to look a girl in the face and just be like, yeah, this is how it is. Mm -hmm. And they like that. You become very attractive. And so being on your grind is attractive too. So like, let me give you the carrot and the stick. The stick is like, don't be a pussy and like, go do stuff. Mm -hmm. The the carrot is like, man, there's a lot of rewards for the men who go to the other side of that challenge. Like when you do Mm -hmm. go to the other side, you let those fire ants bite your arms. Right. Man. You get to be accepted by the men in that group. And that's a pretty sick thing. And you know what happens when you're accepted by the men? The women want you. The money mm-hmm. comes to you. You right. get in shape. You get all this stuff. You get mm-hmm. opportunity. You get great connections. Like, guys, it's simple. <laughs> give up the give up the dumb shit now and get the better stuff later. Right. Period. And so when it comes yeah. to your original question, ask, take an action. Dude, I take action because I want the things that I put in my, in my mind. I want to be in control. I want to be able to say, hey, I'd like to go see Russ in Pittsburgh like May. Let me just fucking drop the money, go book the Airbnb. I'm going to come through. I want front row. I want VIP, 800 bucks. Who cares? I want that. But I can't get that unless I go and crush stuff. Like I have Mm -hmm. to earn it. Mm -hmm. But the, listen, yeah. So it's like, (laughs) there's a lot, there's a lot and I don't want to, I can get carried away. So I don't want to go too hard, but Guys, there's rewards. There's rewards on the other side. It's nice. Yes. It's nice when you get there. Trust mm-hmm. me. No, totally. And I, I want to follow up with that. And then we could probably close it out here because that's yeah, that sure. a perfect way to end it. But yeah. Um, yeah, like what Chris is saying is is like, we're not telling you guys to never have pleasure in life, to never drink a beer, you know, to never uh, indulge in your favorite like restaurant or, or play video games. Like I'm, I'm not saying I'm giving up video games for life. It's just, Mm -hmm. I'm temporarily giving it up because I want to reward myself with the work that I'm doing now. But when I actually do play those video games again, it's going to be because I earned that shit and because I can afford to, because look at all of what I've done in the last month. And it feels so much better. So much, so much of a better feeling when you come from that place. So Mm -hmm. it's like you do the work, you get the reward after you don't, you don't have those backwards. You can't have those backwards. Yeah. And, and, and the very last thing, I'll keep this real short is, you know, again, a really huge thing that I am a big advocate of is like, I have several journals. Yeah. Um, I journal a lot and because I Mm -hmm. journal is because I want to develop self-awareness. And the reason I bring this up in regards to action, it's very easy for me to get lost in, um, constant improvement mode Mm -hmm. and feeling like shit about myself. When I get, like I said, I go pretty hard on myself. So Mm -hmm. developing self-awareness and really taking inventory accurately over time, it really helps you to like go back and reflect on things because you can Mm -hmm. look and say, you know, for example, let me just turn this around really quick. You see, can you see my whiteboard? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So down in the corner over here, I'm tracking my uh, body fat percentage of my weight and I'm tracking my trading progress and I've got my daily goals written down there. The reason I do that is because I want to be, you know, when I'm in the moment, I'm like, oh, I'm not really making that much fitness progress. Like I'm not really like super ripped right now. But then when I take a look at 327, you know, it's 18% body fat. And now I'm like 16.5. It's mm-hmm. like, I'm moving in the right direction. And that's, right. and my goals, you know, it was 10% by May 15th. Mm. 
could get there, you know, where it's got to be very close, going to be very hard. But mm-hmm. even if I fall short of that goal, listen, I'm still going to have abs. And so it's going to be great. Right. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. take action, man. And, and like take inventory. It's great. It's listen. I can't imagine being any other way because I have been other ways and it sucks. Mm hmm. Yeah, man. I mean, it's, there's nothing but good to come from it. And like you said, man, what you, I love the quote, like what you, what you measure grows. So like track your progress, track the things that you're doing, write it down journal, like, and then look back on it. When you finally like months set down the line, you look back on your mm-hmm. progress and say, damn, I did a fucking lot. And mm-hmm. it just, it just, it's the most gratifying feeling. I think when you can see the progress and actually have that documented. So you're like, damn, this is a lot. I did a lot. Mm-hmm. Super important. Yeah. Yeah, it's very important. And it's and it's an exciting journey. And that's the last thing is like, at the end of the day, when you when you just feel good about yourself for doing what you're doing, it, it's a nice feeling, you know, it's a very confident boost. And then all of a sudden, as you take action, it snowballs. So yeah, 100%. Totally, man, I think that's a perfect way to close it out, man. So any, uh, you know, let people know kind of where to find you, uh, social media handles, like whatever, where can people find you? Yeah, definitely. Well, first of all, I definitely want to say very much appreciate you reaching out and, and welcoming me onto your platform. I take it very seriously. I'm very, I was very excited for this all day, um, all week really. And, um, it's a, it's a real pleasure to be able to share and, and fulfill my purpose of what I just want to like go first. And I want to reach back and give people a helping hand if I can, some mm-hmm. people are going to respond to us. Some people won't. And I just hope that if you listen and you listen closely and it strikes a chord with the people listening that you go and take action. Cause it's, it's not for me. It's not for Tino. It's for yourself. Right. Um, and you know, it's a, it's a really great feeling. Seriously. Like I hope you understand that it's a great feeling. And um, mm-hmm. you can find me on Instagram at uh, Christopher C H R X T O P H E R R. You can search Christopher Hannon on pretty much everything or that username C H R X T O P H E R R. And uh, I'm pretty much everywhere at that handle. So, yeah. Love it, man. Well, hey, if you guys like the video, I'll obviously leave Chris's links and everything down below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, you know, all that fun YouTube stuff. So make sure you step, you know, come back for the next podcast because I want to bring some more guests on here and have some really awesome conversations like this. I mean, I've been enjoying these ever since I started doing them. I want to thank Chris again for coming on. I think this was a dope conversation. So many gems that you guys will definitely get from this. So run this back a few times and listen to it again. Watch it a couple of times because there's probably going to be things that you missed. But anyway, um, going to get going, wrap up here. Again, appreciate you, Chris, for coming on. This was an amazing conversation. So do the action, guys. Be uncomfortable. And I promise you good things will come on the other side. So. Peace out. Yes, sir. See you later. Thank you.